one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? You can call me Joker. Hi everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. If you're looking forward to the Batman part two, hit that subscribe button because we're going to talk about it until it's released in 2026 and whatever news comes up as well. We're hoping to hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're about 60 away. So thank you all for your support. It really means a lot to us here at the channel. Okay, let's get right into it. We know that the Joker had a role in the Batman Part 1. Very small, unnamed inmate. Wasn't quite the Joker. Yeah, it was a Joker. Of course, it was a deleted scene. Absolutely confirmed that it was the Joker. And it was Barry Kogan playing the character. A very different approach to it. I think this approach actually garnered a lot of mixed reactions from fans, especially after that deleted scene, which I think was a great scene. Now, what you found of the Joker in that scene, that is subjective and is up to you in your opinion. But I thought the scene itself was wonderful. And I think what that scene showed was how you utilize the Joker going forward he obviously got his time in 89 batman with jack nicholson giving a wonderful performance and then heath ledger obviously blowing the door open and everybody be wanting to become an actor due to that performance that he gave in the dark knight and then of course he sadly passed away and was not able to have a part in the dark knight rises uh which i believe david goyer the film screenwriter said that he was going to have like a Hannibal Lecter type role, which is what we got in the Batman from this new version of Joker. Now, what I loved about that Joker, aside from the usage of him in there as that kind of inside information kind of guy, was the fact that Batman knew about Joker and had already placed him behind bars. There's no origin story. There's no worrying about it. There's no watching Batman take him down. We just have an understanding that these two have met. Maybe they meet frequently, and Batman has succeeded in placing him behind bars. And I love that idea. And I love that he's a younger version of Joker as well. Now, I love, I love, I think typically Joker should be a little bit older than Batman. But if you're going to make changes, you got to make them right, right? And you have to make it all work out and make sense with the universe that you're doing. So I didn't mind this one. I thought it kind of worked in that respect. Plus, you don't really know his age. Obviously, we know the age of the actor portraying him. But we don't know the age of the character in that moment. So I had no real issues there. And I love the usage of him. But it led to fan speculation leading, is he going to be the main bad guy in the Batman 2 or what? And they, obviously that remains to be seen. No one quite knows. The script is not complete for the Batman Part 2, so maybe they don't even know if that's the case or not. But rumors a little while ago indicated that actually Joker was going to be the lead in the Batman Part 3. That was a big rumor. We did a video on it on the channel. I believe that might have been debunked or not, maybe not quite debunked, but kind of a little bit like you hold your horses we haven't got that far yet we're still working on the script for the second one why you want to rush things into this one right now now i am saying okay fine i'm really curious to know where they're going to go with the joker if he's if he is going to have a position in the batman part two because also look if that movie doesn't ever go to arkham if there's no point to visit arkham in the batman part two which there probably will be but what if there's not if there's no reason to visit arkham asylum in the second batman movie why would you even have the Joker in it? Unless, of course, he escaped or whatever. But why would you have him in it? You don't want to force the Joker into something that he doesn't need to be in. And if you're not going to go to the location that the Joker is currently dwelling in, why would you have that at all? This leads me down to the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast that happened a little while ago. And Barry Kilgan was on that. And he had this to say about the Joker appearing in future installments of the Reeves verse. And I'm getting this from Cinnamon Blend, so let's check it out. Again, you know it's iconic, and to people performing it, you know it's just iconic performances, and it's a big one. But I am going to say that, you know, if the opportunity came about, yes, I'd love to explore, and given that opportunity, really dive into it. But I've not been contacted, and I've not heard anything, so I can't. Yeah. Kind of interesting, we know that Colin Farrell signed on for three movies, and he wouldn't he wasn't able to disclose any of that until the end of the Penguin series. Once that series was wrapped up, then he's like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in three of these things. I don't know what my role is going to be. I know I have a few scenes in the second one. Maybe not. So the Joker, maybe he's not in this, but I think that, honestly, I think if you listen to what he says here, if you read what he says here, let's read it one more time. He says, again, you know, it's iconic, and to the people performing it, you know it's just iconic performances, and it's a big one. But I'm going to say that you know if the opportunity came about, yes, I'd love to explore. And given that opportunity, really dive into it. I'm going to stop there. So what he's saying there is basically he knows whether or not he's coming back in the franchise. <laughs> he just doesn't know to what capacity 
or even what film maybe he's coming back in. He might not be in the second one, but he might return for the third. I think it's kind of like Chekhov's gun, right? You show the Joker in the first act, you don't, you know, you use him in the third act, but he could play a part in the second one, we don't know. Side act part of the holidays are coming up. It's Black Friday time. And if you're looking for a gift for a loved one, a friend, or a family member, check out Limelight Co. Candles. They are organic, no paraffins, coconut soy. You can get molds. You can get different scents. Check out the website. And if you promo code Black Friday 10, you'll get 10% off your order. But I do think Barry Kogan, I think he knows when that he's going to be reprising this role or not. And he really, you know, he gave the big props to the actors who portrayed this character prior to him. Obviously, two of the four live action movie jokers that we've gotten have won Academy Awards for their roles. So there's actually a lot of pressure on the next Joker. Uh, to be really good, obviously, right? Because we had Joaquin Phoenix. I mean, the second movie, you guys will say what you want, but the second movie, but Joaquin Phoenix absolutely crushed Arthur Fleck Joker in the first movie. I thought he was spectacular in the second movie as well. Like, you know, I, he's just such a great actor. But Jack Nicholson, he's my he's my guy, man. That's my, that's, I, I grew up with Cesar Romero, but when that movie came out in 89, I thought he was a phenomenal Joker, I thought he stole that movie from Michael Keaton, from Batman. I actually, I have a Batman action figure, but I remember I saved up money to buy the Joker action figure, and Joker wasn't even my favorite. I just really wanted the Joker action figure. Also, the, the flower on that toy spit out water. So I was, I mean, that was also very exciting. But I think, look, these movies, I think you don't use Joker as your main antagonist. And I think, you know, with the Joker fully a duh, even with the first Joker, with the Suicide Squad, uh, and then obviously... Heath Ledger knocking out of the park. I mean, I guess that's been 15 years now. But the thing with the Joker is oversaturation. And I think with the Batman villain rogue gallery, you don't need to keep going to that well. You don't need to keep pushing the Joker well. And who knows when we're going to get him in a DCU. I think that's going to be probably far down the line. But we don't need to go there. You've got other intriguing, fascinating villains that are also grounded in the reality of, Bat of this Reeves versus Batman, I think you utilize them as big or small as they are. I think Batman is your selling point. The villains are intriguing enough, but you already gave us Riddler, Penguin, and Catwoman, and a little tiny bit of Joker in the first movie. You know, you just promise us those guys again, or a little bit of those guys, and bring in whatever, you know, D-list villain you want. We're going to be on board with it. It's the story. It's, it's the story of this franchise, of this trilogy that is drawing us in more than... The characters within. I mean, the characters are playing a part of it, but you know what I mean. I, it's just, it's just the story is king. So whatever, whatever they utilize, whatever they need to tell the story that they're doing, they're going to do. Whether it's Court of Owls or Hush or whatnot, you've got the pieces there. We're on board. Put it, the pieces together and show us the finished puzzle because that's what we want. So that being said, I think you know. Look, Penguin, Joker, Catwoman, and Riddler are the big four. They are the core four Batman villains, arguably. I think I don't. I don't know if there's a debate on that. I'm not saying they have to be your favorite. I'm just saying they're the core four Batman villains, and you've already introduced them. So if you use them just in little pieces, we know, you know, like Penguin, Colin Farrell said he's got five to six scenes. If you have Joker come back for maybe half a scene again, maybe you do another version of that deleted scene, and you don't make it deleted this time. Who knows what they're going to do? But I say little, a little Joker if at all any, goes a very long way. And look, I have all the faith in the world of Reeves and his team surrounding this franchise right now. So whatever they want to do, I'm going to be honest with you. Right now, I'm all on board with. Also, if you haven't checked out Holy Christmas Batman from my friend Brian Royer, link in the description below. It is a jolly good time. Those are my thoughts on the Joker possibly being a part in the Batman Part 2 or Part 3 or even both. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may be the master of your own universe.